so our company is Kraft Heinz Company, and we're going to start to go into more detail about it during our presentation. So, so these, yeah. oh yeah, you got it. Our two articles were titled Kraft Heinz to Restate Financial Results Following Investigation, and it pertains to restatements that go back as far as 2016 from an SEC probe that also re revealed misconduct in procurement division. And our second article is Key Brands Pay Price of Kraft Heinz Cost Cutting, and in focusing on profits, the owner of Velveeta Cheese and Oscar Mayer Meats missed the consumer shift with simpler and more natural ingredients. So this is a summary of the key issues. And Kraft Heinz stated that stated errors in accounting that go back several more years than previously known. Um, so now we found out that the company has been has to restate financial data that goes as far back as 2016. And the adjustments are now close to $208 million. What does that mean? So, I'm assuming it's a downward restatement? Yeah. Uh, okay. we're gonna, I'm going to go into it a little bit uh, later okay. in the presentation. But yeah, okay. it's a downward adjustment. Oh, OK. Yeah. Um, so right now, they're facing an investigation into its procurement practices by the SEC because of all these um, uh, the restatements. And Kraft Heinz stated that during an internal investigation that it revealed misconduct of several members in the procurement procurement division, but they also stated another in another um, meeting that no misconduct was from any senior management team member, which I just thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. Sort of diverting attention, saying I don't know anything about it. Must have been somebody yeah, else. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Do you think something that big could happen just with some peon or small person in the company? Um, or do I you think there's got to be more collusion? I, I personally don't think that just because a couple of people that weren't in the senior management team would do that. So I think uh, it's just a little bit suspicious. Mm -hmm. Especially, I don't know, after they said a statement like that, I don't know, just seems you know, suspicious. Yeah. Um, so Kraft also Kraft Heinz also said that they didn't find they, they didn't think that the financial state misstatements were material. It just involved the incorrect timing of reporting costs and rebate the contract. And but in the latest disclosure, it shows that the accounting problems were they they almost lost twenty billion in value. And we're gonna go. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about it later. But Warren Buffett also had a statement about this. So some of the more some more key issues. The 2015 merger of Heinz and Kraft Food was aimed at helping the company better navigate the fast-changing consumer trends and revive sales of packaged foods, which were dropping. And then, according to Heinz executives, the changes in the food industry have had a stronger impact on the brand than anticipated. And this resulted in a $15.4 billion write-down in assets including a $7.1 billion write down of goodwill and an $8.3 billion write down of intangible assets. That's a lot of money. How did, when, can you talk more about that? Um, well, through the merger, the articles state that just over $30 billion of goodwill was generated. So, and then obviously it was deemed that that was well above what is actually accurate for the merger uh -huh. and then of that that 30 million makes up the total 44.3 billion dollars in goodwill so a, a very substantial portion of the goodwill is from this merger and then it was found to be overstated so essentially their estimates of future value were computed incorrectly yeah they were grossly overstated and how do you think that happened? How do you think that happened that they, I mean, that's a big number. I mean, I think that they were just overly optimistic in what they were really forming and it just, it proved to not be as 
effective and as efficient as it as they thought. Do you think the auditor should have caught that? Um, yeah, I think it's on them and then really anyone who was involved. I don't know. I don't know how they calculated that $30 billion estimate, but it does seem pretty steep. Compared yeah. What their goodwill sure. was and just the value of the companies overall. Okay. And um, so going forward with the key issues, the focus on marketing fact on making factories more efficient and reducing corporate headcount caused Heinz Craft to permanently lose customers and hurt their ability to compete for prime shelf space at supermarkets. Mm -hmm. And the company was overall overly optimistic on delivering savings that did not materialize. Okay, so these are some of the consequences that led um, because of their misstatements. Um, Warren Buffett said that Berkshire Hathaway overpaid when they helped Kraft Heinz through a merger in 2015. And then um, he stated that although it wasn't like necessarily a bad thing, it does just make things some like, it does make some things like not like great just because the, he overpaid so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then a number of the procurement division were let go, but um, I don't think anyone from the senior division were let go from the two articles that I read. Um, and then several pension funds are suing Kraft Heinz in regards to the company's falling stock. Um, and some, one, trade, one trading firm has filed an allegation of insider trading, and Kraft Heinz stated that they're going to vigorously fight the lawsuit. So um, these are some other factors that I, uh, I found while reading the two articles that also are causing craft times to decline. Uh, consumers are shopping for more simpler and more natural ingredients, which craft times is not necessarily known for. And one analyst stated that craft times might have been more focused on lowering costs and building their brand equity. So in the two in one of the articles that I read that uh, they're talking about how craft times was just focus a lot, really focused on lowering their costs, that they weren't giving their marketing or much attention to their consumers. And that seems to be a reason why their company is also declining. Kraft Times also admitted that Kraft Cheese and Oscar Mayer isn't as worth, isn't worth as much as the brand uh, when the brands merged. So they had to cut the value of the biggest brands. And that also leads to writing down assets, goodwill, intangible assets, and this write down, these write downs wiped out more than 14 billion of the company's market value, which is a big oh my God. number. That's huge. Yeah. Interesting. Now, if I'm going back, go, go back one more slide. Consumers are shopping for foods with simpler, more natural ingredients. Would the, is, is that the two of you guys? Would you put yourself in that category, or do you still like processed food? There's no right or wrong answer, of course. I think. Um, for me, when I'm at home, my mom does most of the shopping and she does like shop at like, um, Whole Foods and stuff. So I okay. say bed better or more simpler, more natural stores. But okay. me, when I'm at school, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just shopping for whatever's there. Okay. So personally. Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that makes sense. Andrew? Yeah. yeah. Personally, I do try to be conscious of what I'm eating and just with the, general availability increasing of all these healthier options. I like to I like to keep track of what's going on. But that being said, I definitely haven't cut out processed foods. Okay. So looking forward for Kraft Heinz to answer the question of whether or not Kraft Heinz can overcome its financial problems by increasing its marketing activities and sales. We concluded that while increasing the marketing activities and sales, um, they will help their financial problems. This is only a sh relatively short-term solution. And in order to fully get over their financial problems, Kraft Heinz will need to innovate their products to meet the changing demands of consumers. And we recommend focus, 
focusing on trends in consumer behavior like the health and wellness trends to drive new product development. And lastly, by adapting the company's strategy to better fit the current food and craft Heinz, we'll begin to rebound from the current financial problems. For our next question, whether or not any top managers should remain at Kraft after the financial misconduct that has been disclosed to the SEC investigation, we concluded that it may be smart to remove some top managers and just kind of have a fresh start. From the perspective of shareholders, people must be held accountable for this, for these actions. And um, someone has to take, take the blame. And then lastly, what should Kraft prioritize to deal with its current financial mis misconduct? <clears throat> and we think they should definitely prioritize compliance with the SEC first and foremost. And then additionally, they should internally address the sources of the, of the accounting misinformation and work internally to create measures to prevent another similar issue or any more really going forward. Um, so how does this affect us, oh, yeah. the consumer? We may see a change in the Kraft Heinz products in the future as they adjust their products to meet consumer demands. We're already seeing new products that are just advertised as healthier, more simple ingredients. So I really think they're already starting to try and address these issues and go along with um, the trends in consumer behavior. Okay, good. Now, a, a question overall, um, this is the class in financial statement analysis. Um, how, what, what did you learn about financial statement analysis after reading this? How might you approach looking at financial statements based on what you saw with Kraft Times? What would you be looking for in a financial statement? That might be uh, either a hint or clue or something that you should consider. What should you look at? Um, uh, you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think definitely just <clears throat> where they use estimates and stuff, kind of questioning how they calculate them and not necessarily taking everything for face value. Yeah. So looking at their footnotes and other notes on the statements just to help kind of rationalize where the company got their numbers from. Just make sure um, that everything makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I think for me, I would check, just look through the statements and try to be as detailed as possible, but um, something like Goodwill, where it's kind of like their, it's their own estimate, um, <laughs> I'd just maybe take a second to like try to try to see where they came up with whatever number that they have on their balance sheet. Mm -hmm. uh, was Goodwill and other intangibles a significant portion of their assets? Um, I don't remember if I read that anywhere, but out of like everything that they wrote down, they were, um, I think they contributed a good amount to the wipe down of their market value. So it was significant. Yeah. I think yeah, it was relatively significant, I would say. Yeah. And one of the things you can do is when you're analyzing a financial statement, if you do a common size balance sheet, yeah, you probably would have seen how big goodwill was and intangibles. And that, you know, that's always a risk um, of what's going on. Good job. What else did you learn about yourself and assumptions you make when you approach things? Um, um, personally, I, I honestly didn't know much about this merger in the first place that it even happened. Okay. So, um, I guess just kind of how, how little things like that can just kind of fly under the radar if you're not, mm -hmm. if they're not presented to you and sure, I guess yeah, uh, I, didn't realize that they merged. I guess I didn't realize, I didn't realize that either. And I have been noticing their newer products like they have a new product with ketchup mixed with mayo, and they have all these other new product lines in like Walmart and stuff. And I didn't oh. realize that um, they were doing that in gain back 
more customers that they lost previously. Wow. So I didn't realize that. Okay. Great. Um, how did you guys do working virtually? One of you was Geneseo and Simon, where are you? You're downstate? Yeah, You're in Queens. Queens. Yeah. How did you guys deal with working virtually? Uh, I don't think it was like anything too hard. We just use Google um, Slides and we just texted and just try to work through it, but I think it worked, went pretty well. Okay, great. Uh, well, 